This is Boxing Tickets NA. We are delighted to be joined all the way down under in Australia with, with I'm probably going to say it's, it's probably going to be a mixture of obviously Ireland and Australia. You've sort of got a bit of, of, a, of a mixed sort of culture now, but delighted to be joined with Owen Corrigan, the bomber Owen Corrigan. Um, oh, wow. if, if, if people could see the sun shining here and obviously you're inside a gym environment, you would think yeah. that I was in Australia and you weren't because the, the sun's yeah. shining here. I think it's about 14 degrees, but the sun's out. Um, but delighted to be joined, obviously, with you for the first time. Um, you Obviously, you've made your announcement now, you're turning pro. Does it sort of feel yeah. real to you now? I guess, obviously, people showing the love and showing the appreciation of you going pro. It feels like you've made a good decision at this time. Joe, you know, it feels crazy because I've been trying to turn pro for the last few years and just different things have been popping up. But um, I started boxing when I was about 14. And it took a few years out when I was about 19 to 22. And I went back, went back boxing. So just before, when I was about 21, I was in a bit of a bad place. And I was in, I was actually living in Tenerife at the time. And just since then, I've been all over. And boxing has brought me a full circle. And now the fact I get to make this my career. And people have been texting me from the lads of boxing in Denisteri to the lads of boxing in Tenerife to the last in the Owens gym, to now, like, it just, I was only saying to coach last week, I've been trying so hard to get this, and he said, yeah, well, there's a reason for it, because everything happens for a reason, and you are where you are for a reason. You, but yeah, the sport's been amazing. I was going to say, you can sort of tell, you've been watching interviews, because you sort of nearly, you know, I, I sort of told you a bit of a sort of concept, and we're sort of planning this as well, but you know the concept, you knew where to go straight <laughs> into with the first question, where I start up box at this age, they're going, Craigie, hey, like, what have I got left to ask? Because you've really, you've really answered my first question. Um, I know, listen, I said to you, you know, I used to think, uh, I was actually, when you put up a, a post saying, new pro alert, Owen Cargan, my heart jumped out because I've been following you for years and I'm, I'm a, not just a boxer, but I'm a boxing geek. Like, I watch domestic level, I watch top level, but I love, I love Irish boxing. I love, I think we have a different style. I really noticed that since we came here, like we're jab, step back, bam, 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 more speed. And it's just, you've, you've always covered it. And whether it be Larry Fryers in the States, whether it be Wallace, Watson, TJ or Dennis down here, you've always covered it. And even Kevin, Jamie and all they've been through. I suppose at first, I first came aware of your page when Arthur Heroin fought, <clears throat> sorry, when Arthur Heroin fought Lewis Crocker in Belfast and Ulster Hall. I was actually I was in Adam's corner for that fight, so all the, like that was a huge thing for me, the big learning curve, being around the media speculation. I think you interviewed, you might have interviewed Arsene, you might have not. I but, don't think it did. I I, I sort of sometimes focus so much. I think what probably about ninety nine percent of interviews are to do with Irish boxing. Sometimes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel bad sometimes, Owen, because you know what the thing is is if you go and interview an opponent. Then someone goes, oh, you're on their side. You know, so it's a stick. As you well know in this boxing game, sometimes it's like it's like a soap. You can you can affect yeah. somebody very, very quickly with things. So like even if he shook someone's hand or said hello to him, a boxer could take offense to that in some ways. You know, it's sometimes it's, yeah, yeah. it's like an old woman sort of game. But um, I guess that's the thing. Like, I'm a fan of the sport the same way you're a fan of the sport. And I, I like to try and give everybody a bit of coverage. So... It's coming full circle for you now from sort of watching them. You're now going to be able to watch yourself on it as well. Yeah, completely. Like, that's this is a mad, it's been a mad few days because, like, all I've done is announce this. It's been a long time coming, and people have been saying, well done, and what have you. But, like, I can't wait to get my first fight out of the way. I'm rare to go, I'm absolutely rare to go. And to be one of the, like, the Irish boxers that's going to be covered. And to join the ranks and start chasing it, like so, completely. At, at the age of fourteen, what what was it that got you in the box? You know, like as you'll know from obviously watching the interviews and things, people get into it for different reasons. Obviously, I know you watched the Connor Wallace interview done a few weeks ago. He was obviously overweight and sort of come into it with yeah. sort of bullying and stuff as well. He was getting bullied, like at school. Like at the age of fourteen, what was it that got you in the box? And was it? Was it the fact that your parents didn't want you getting bullied? Was there anybody in the family at box? What got you into it? It's, it's funny. I actually watched the interview, and when he said he got, he was 
chubby and whatever. I, I think it's mad because nine percent of us get into boxing because we were chubby kids and we go on and we get in shape and get a bit of confidence. But what actually happened with me was I was a chubby kid and you know, I was always the butt of the joke. And I'm not going to say I was bullies, but like, I was always kind of the, the laugh beyond me. I kind of took it now, like, but my uncle was, my uncle was always being an athlete, you know, but he started boxing. He started boxing when he was about 30, 30 years old with Jay Byrne. Him and Jay were both mates. And um, my uncle said to my dad one day, if you go bring me down to St. Margaret's at the time it was, so I went down, I think I've only did two sessions there and I couldn't, I couldn't box. I thought I could box going in and it's mad how quick I am. But being in that gym environment, getting to meet boxers, so you, you see these lads coming in, they're ripped and they're whatever. And next thing you know, they're, they're proper down to earth, nice lads. And I think I must have done two or three sessions there. And then my uncle, he changed job or something, so I couldn't get a lift out to stay in Ogden. So I got my dad to bring me down to Ennis Clary Boxing Club and I played, I played Gary football as a child so I knew James Cal was there so me and James boxed for years together me so it was me, Dana and James and a few others Dana's brother Michael and the second I walked into that club I don't know what happened but it just it, it just bit me like we it was the, it was so hard because we were in a community hall at the time and we had to pack away the ring, pack away the bags. And Paul Hill took me from a chubby kid with no confidence. He took me to, got to the final of Michael Andrews where I fought Edward Donovan, knocked out a lad in the semi-final and then had Edward Donovan the next day. But I showed up and he, he turned me into a lovely little boxer. And he, he did a lot for me. But, um, so that's what got me into boxing. But it's my you say it because I started off as a chubby kid and next thing you know, on this, like animal, just machine, just run. I used to run the training. I used to live, live about two kilometers away and run the training. I train, pack away the bags, pack away the ring, run two kilometers home. And even though I was called a dub last night, I had to run back up to Wicklow Mountains, which is like that. So, um, no, yeah, I was bitten by the balls. But then, I suppose when I turned about 19, you know how it goes. You start drinking, you start getting into trouble. So, I played a game of football, not at a high level or anything, but I think it was, we'd play a game on a Tuesday or Thursday and you go to the pub after and that's what sad happened to me. And then, so I played together for a few years and it was always in and out training, never stops. It was always kind of doing something, whether it be hitting the bag, going down to Ennis Perry on the weekends or whatever. And then when COVID happened, I got let go from work and... Me and my mate said, should I go to Tenerife for do a week or two? We ended up being there a month later and a month later. But all we were doing was sitting inside the pubs, drinking and whatever. And then got this, we got jobs over there and I was mad. Like, but what happened was I met a lad from Manchester and uh, he saw me just kind of going down a bad pass. And he was a boxer. He had a box club in Manchester, but he was doing a bit over. I said, look, let's do a bit of training. He said, you always talk about how you're this boxer or what have you. So he had a set of pads, I had gloves, did a bit of pads, did a bit of sparring. And he goes, look, you're not bad. Like, you have a lot of potential. You're still young. So he brought me down to Boxeo Pavidano, which is a gym in the last Americas. And it, the second I walked in there, it was like walking into this kind of boxing club all over again. They just fell in love with me and I fell in love with them. I was invited down... So it'd be open Monday to Friday and Saturday would be closed except for sparring, but it'd be invitation only. So I went down on Saturday and at this stage I was about 118 and a half kilos. So I was a big boy and they threw me in there with Arthur Horoyan, who fought Lewis Crocker in Ulster Hall. Yeah. That's another story. But uh, so Arthur was at the time he was about 70 kilos or so, so it was a huge weight difference, but it was the ego thing of me in the gym and he went for me, he absolutely went for me, but I stuck stuck to boxing, everything Paul has still taught, taught me, I'm just on my toes, jabbing the face, jabbing the face, and I hopped out of the ring after about three rounds. Bit of a bloody nose, bit of a black eye, but Manuel, the coach, came over me and said, you stay with me, 
no drinking, no trouble. I'll take you all the way. And so two years later, we, we ended up, I was representing the Canary boxing team. I was, I traveled to Belfast to do Art Maroney's Corner, I guess Lewis Crocker, which is an amazing experience. Real earning curve going to the pro game. But um, the style didn't suit me. And what I found was I lost too much weight too fast. I was making 75 kilos, 80 kilos. I was essentially a boy in a man's body. And so I moved, went home eventually and was working in a box fit gym with Kenneth Doyle, who trains out in Monkstown. Kenneth was training with John O'Leary's. And Kenneth said, one day he said, there's laughing Kerry coming up. I don't know if you know him, his name's Kevin Cronin. We all know Kevin Cronin now. So I ended up doing five, six rounds with Kevin and we had a good spar, a good little ding dong. And um, we sparked two or three times after. I think I said to Jano one of the time, I said, Jano, I really like what you're saying to me in the corners. I really like your style of boxing. Would there any chance that you think about doing a bit of training with me? And I said, no, but I come down. So I went down to the gym and like that, the Lewis gym for me was, I loved, loved every second of training there. It was unbelievable. I wanted to turn pro, but we weren't quite ready. I didn't understand the pro game as much as I thought. There's a lot more to it than just turning up and fighting. So, yeah, so I, I got a love for it. He, he really cleaned up my style. I was that Real aggressive going in, but he cleaned it up. Working with Kevin was amazing. Kevin taught me so much about the program, about how he presented himself. Yeah, everyone knows Kevin. He always has Kingdom Warrior everywhere. So little small things that really taught me. And then so we ended up, went to the Celtic Box Cup with Jono and we didn't get the win. It was a close fight. The lad we fought was real kind of tap and run, tap and run, which didn't suit the kind of style we built. We are trying to get a few amateur fights to get a bit of confidence to turn pro or what have it. But so we didn't didn't lose head over and two weeks later we end up in the seniors and the Irish seniors and uh, we fought in the semi final and I can't believe it because I actually fought out with skin that day. One my best fights and we got we stopped them and he disqualified me last second for a cut. So I was knocked out of the seniors and that happened. And then I should have went into elite. It's a big regret of mine, not, never fighting in the elite in Ireland. But I ended up going to Thailand, traveling for about for a month. I was training that Tiger Muay Thai with John Hutchison, John Muay mm-hmm. Boxing. And um, he was actually trying to get me to stay there and sign on with him, but I just, I, it wasn't for me. I moved back home and Jano said, right, now's the time we've got to push it and now's the time for you to kind of to start treating yourself as a professional boxer. And I don't know what happened to me when I, when I got back from Thailand. I was just saying, um, now people talk about it a lot nowadays. I was a bit depressed to myself and not much going on outside the ring and what was happening outside the ring really affected me inside the ring. Mm-hmm. And I just wasn't myself. And one of my mates was heading over here and a few lads over here and they're like, bummer, get over here, get over here now. So I said to John, I said, look, I'm going to head off to Australia. And uh, he sent Dylan McDonough, he sent Dylan McDonough a text message saying, look, I have a lot here. He's, he's got a bit of potential. Is any boxing games for him to go to? So he sent me on the name to Ring Fifth. And um, we arrived on the Wednesday, about Wednesday morning. Wednesday night, I was down at Ring Fifth in a beginner's class. I wasn't sure what was going to happen if I was going to be walking away from the sport and nothing, but I just said, look, I'm going to a boxing gym and whatever happens, happens. And then, boom, I think about a month later, I had my first amateur over here against a pro boxer and box, boxed years off and put on one of the best performances I think I've had. Went to the Australian Championships. I think I got flew that week and just didn't turn up. But my last fight then against a lad called Dennis Gojak. So he's a five-time Australian champion. He's a quality boxer and we just put on performance and we, we bet him every round. So we've actually beaten the two finalists of the WA state final mm-hmm. every round. 
whatever's happening here, it's, it's working out and it's working in my favour. And we decided now's the time to go pro. So that's that's where we are. You're, you're definitely the one thing I would say is you're definitely a talker. I know how I was sort of going like I could have do I could have just like said send me a video clip there, but I've been listening to you all along there. Like I guess the one thing I can sort of like there's a couple of things I can sort of notice me speaking there. You sound very impulsive. Obviously, a lot of us men are. Obviously, you know it's it's the usual. As you know, I mean, the minute I'll say this, somebody would say somebody would send you a text at the weekend, and they would know be sending you a text. You would go straight away. I'll go for a drink. Uh, so you're very impulsive. You're obviously very honest as well. Obviously, you know a lot of teenagers can can unfortunately go down that route of women and drink and drugs or anything else. I'm not saying obviously you're taking drugs or anything else, but when you're when you're impulsive as a teenager, you want to try these things and. Like, obviously, you wouldn't have probably known yourself. It, you know, your drinking was probably getting to that sort of stage. But it can it can it can happen to anybody so easily. And thankfully, you probably found yourself in, in Tenerife because you know where would you probably be now if if someone yeah. hadn't put their arm around and said you're, you're sort of wasting yourself here. Jeez, yeah, I actually had that conversation today with someone. We were talking away, and she I actually met her in Tenerife. She's living over here now, and she said, "Ah." Oh, so I reckon if you if if you never went there, you'd be working some boring job, doing some boring thing. You'd be just going to the pub every weekend with your way. Just said, but the fact now, you you've gone away, you made all your mistakes, you've learned your lesson, you turned around, and you became a better person, a better man, and now you're a fighter and you're a pro fighter now. That's that's what happens. Some 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 of us learn from mistakes, and I'm home saying one of them like. I I would probably more so say it's, it's life experience. You know, you've obviously unless sometimes you've been through something, you don't know what it's like, and it's probably you know now as you say you went to Australia and it just seems like your your luck sort of changed for you in some ways. It's you've grown up with that experience now that you know mm-hmm. you know that, and I'd probably say one thing you probably think of, and you're, you obviously haven't debut news or anything like that yet, but when you see the likes of Dennis Hogan, T.J. Heaney, Dara Foley, Connor Wallace. Uh, Nathan Watson, all these guys have been over here, over in Australia, and then forged the a career in Australia. That obviously gives you a lot of confidence. Yeah, completely. Like I remember, like Dennis Hogan, for example. I remember before Instagram was really a thing. We had Facebook and you know what have it. I remember seeing Dennis Hogan put up pictures in his box in Australia, and I'd always wanted, like since I was a chap, since I was a kid, I wanted to move to Australia. I've always said that. And then when I started boxing, I wanted to be a pro boxer. And then I suppose when I was about 17, 18, I was thinking, could you ever do both? Could you ever? And then Australia thing went out the window and the pro boxer thing came and then went and then came back strong. And now I'm a pro boxer. I'm living in Australia. And I, in those years, I've seen, so TJ Dehaney come over here and TJ Dehaney for me, so Irish Kiko Martinez, he's, Unbelievable boxer, he's a fighter. What he did against in the week the other week was nothing short of since I, like he turned up, won the pound pound race and he pushed him back. He actually trained in ring fish um during COVID, I think TJ did Dan was saying, but um uh, Daryl Foley, I actually sent Daryl Foley a text before I came out here. I said to him, look, I've been trying training here like the past few years to turn pro and I've got to the level I'm finally there things aren't working out outside the ring I'm looking at me with Australia as an option would you have any advice and he sent me on load of, he was actually sent, he sent on loads so there'll be advice and I'm really appreciative of it and what he's done in the past few years as well coming back to Europe having big fights there he's fought Jack Catterall the build up to the Jack Catterall fight was class I, I think he's a proper character he, he knocked Robbie Davies back, I think, the year before last, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Nathan Watson as well, like, you know, I'm, I'm watching him big time now. Like, what he's doing is class. Like, he's, he's going to ask the Kevin Crown set up. He's got his own jerseys. He's whatever. He's, he lost the Australian title in his last point far last, but now he's back. He put on a good performance last time. And then Connor Wallace, like, Connor Wallace is obviously the head of the cream of the crop at the moment, like, you know, he's pushing heavy for world titles and we're in around the same weight, so it'd be, it'd be great if he could set up a spar within the next year or so 
I know he's on the other side of Australia, but I think me and him get a bit of good bit of work together. So yeah, there's plenty of inspiration and plenty of role models to be looking at. Isn't it great? Obviously, this sport of boxing, like you know, I, I was sort of speaking to um, a new pro here in Belfast, hey Jim McMahon, on Monday, and you know, you go and spar someone, and obviously, when you're you, you don't have the experience they have, and they're telling you hold your left hand up more, watch your yeah. feet when you're sort of throwing punches, they tell you how to improve. Like you know, I know we're going to be we're going to be sort of <coughs> laser focused, and that boxing's the best in the world, but there's literally no other sport. That I can think of that that other people help other people improve. And as you're saying there, and Dara Foley sending you messages, offering you advice, and you're sort of going, like you've been looking up to these guys for years, and they're the best yeah, yeah, yeah. advice so you can do things like boxing is the creme de la creme of everything. That's what I love about boxing. Like we've got we've got a lot of kids, like let's say kids, I mean teenagers training in gym with us, and one of the best things you can do because you've Gather up all this knowledge of you is, is useless if you don't give that back. So I'd always be giving out, I'd be bringing the, the teenagers to other clubs sparring and you get a big kick out of it, you know, like, and no matter what level you're at, you'll always, you'll always get that. And you kind of know true boxing people by what the, how they treat you. I've never met a top boxing coach that hasn't given nice advice, hasn't been open, hasn't, you know, found a way to, to work with you, obviously unless you're boxing on their boxes, but you know, like I, I was in John O'Brien was over to Manchester to Gallagher's gym, sparring Kevin sparred Jose Burden, I sparred Mark Heffron, and after I sparred, so when Kevin was in the ring with Jose, and after I sparred Mark Heffron, Joe Gallagher came over to me and he, he said, Jeez, was that okay? I hope everyone's all right, blah blah. And then he started telling me what I could improve on, why they well, why they other things. Invited me back, I went back about two, three, four weeks ago, or not weeks ago, weeks after. And um, yeah, like we, we, we got good work in, and then he started saying to me, like, what you can do be better, blah, blah, blah. So I went back to Jano with that advice. And it's mad, it's so similar what your coaches say, it's just someone else has different words to say it. But like, he could have easily uh, just used me as a boxing bag, just told me absolutely nothing. But it's the best sport in the world in terms of helping each other out. It's that hope, isn't it? That hope and inspiration. Obviously, you know, if a, if a boxing coach were to tell you that you're rubbish, you'd probably give it up, you know, because you wouldn't, you know, and, and that's the general makeup of a lot of people, you know, it's like if someone tells you you're not good at something, you can do it one or two ways. You're going, what does that person know? You know, and we obviously yeah. know they. The, the expertise of Joe Gallagher, but you could also look at another hand and go, maybe he is right, and it'll play in your head, and you go, maybe he is right, no, this isn't for me, I'll, I'll go back drinking, or or I'll, I'll go back to GAA, or something like that, you know, and, you know, I guess the good thing is, when you find really good coaches like Joe Gallagher, or obviously even John O'Leans as well, who obviously, I, do you know what, the amount of messages that Kevin sends me on a weekly basis, trying to get me to do an interview with John O, because he knows John O doesn't like doing interviews, um, but but obviously I know Jono's even a great coach as well. It's like these guys are father figures in ways to where they help engage you along the right path, and then it's up to yeah. you to make the right decision. Completely, like, and I've noticed that since I'm coming over here, like, so I walk in this gym, so I've no family over here. Most of my friends they work on the mines, so I don't see them for three three weeks, and when they do come back, I'm in here, so I don't see them. But so Dan, my coach in here, he's took me under his wing, he's he's given me a gym, he's he's given me so much. So the second day I was in here, he introduced me to a man who was renting a house. Boom, two days later I have a house rented five minutes from the gym. He set me up at work. He's you know, he's he's done a lot for me and then he's gotten my style and he's just mixed everything I've learned and now we've just we're starting to, to look like a good, strong, capable boxer. So it's like that, kind of like a father figure kind of thing. And that's what you need, obviously, as, as well. Like, like when you think, obviously, over the last few years, obviously, you know, we, where you're on Tenerife and you obviously got to the stage of the weight you're at, you're obviously very proud of yourself now and obviously how far you've you've sort of come back from that because I say, you know, we, we look at someone like Tyson Fury, obviously, look at, look obviously, the, the size that he went to and he's, and he's come back and, and as you say, he lost too much weight at a time. You seem level-headed, you seem 
confident and, and secure yourself now that the decisions you're making are the right decisions? Oh, completely. Like, Joe Riz, I lost a lot of fights in a row. I got hit a lot of times when I shouldn't have. I got the head smacked off me in sparring. I've been, I've done mad runs. I've done, killed myself trying, but I'm still here. I'm still, I'm still ready for more. I'm still, you know, ready to go. Like, most people haven't had the career so far that I've had. Most people wouldn't be able to. But that's my biggest asset. But the way I see it is, all that means nothing. That means nothing now. We're starting a new game. We're walking into a new ring. And the challenges are going to keep coming and keep coming. But it's the confidence I have now that I can walk through anything. I'm going to climb one mountain. I'm going to look for the next mountain. I'm going to climb that. When that mountain's climbed, I'm going to go to the next one, the next one. So as many challenges, as many risks come, I'll be ready. Obviously, now that I guess, you know, you're not content now, obviously, the fact that you've announced that you have pro because you've wanted to do it for the last few years. I guess the burning question now is, is there debut news on the way? I guess, obviously, it's it's learning that sort of, you know, it's 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 getting in contact with promoters and things like that for shows. Is there conversations being had on when your debut will be? Yeah, there is. There is conversations being had. So we're looking at, well, you, well before Christmas, just over, around November time, so we're just what the thing about here was hard to get. It's hard to get opponents. You don't have the same number of likes your training men, so you learn the fights. Which look, it's a business. You want to get. You want to learn. Like the way I see it is, I've opened up a business and I'm the business, and I want to get as much experience and capability to go forward for the big fights. But it's hard to get them here, so you have to fly them in from like in Indonesia or even. If I'm flying a lad over from Sydney, which is five, six hours away, it's not like a running air flight, you know, it's, it, it costs. But we're not in, in it to make a profit, but it is. We're, we're fine. Opponents are. We've had two or three say no because they've seen that I've made a bit of a splash on Instagram. I'm thinking, geez, he must be a bit of something. So, but we'll get there. Even if you have to take a bit of a risk, like I don't want to take, we'll, we'll be there. Somebody's told me obviously in the past. Somebody's obviously it's box in Australia, and I'm not going to sort of give them up, give them up. But but obviously in Australia you wouldn't sort of have journeymen as such as the way you'd have obviously in, in the UK and things like that. So like you can sort of sometimes find your the level is sort of have is when you fight someone there you either get stopped or you stop the opponent. That's the sort of way Australian boxing seems to be. There obviously is a lot of fights where they go the distance and things like that, but it sort of seems to be. You knock them out, or they knock you out. That seems to be the style in Australian boxing. Yeah, it's 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 pretty gory. I was at a um, I was at a world title fight about two three weeks ago. I think it was Alex Winwood. He was fighting a lad from Thailand. So it was at minimum weight. The lad he was fighting was the longest reigning world champion, WBO champion. There was his eight nine years of champion. And Alex Winwood was his fourth fight. Fourth fight and he was in a world title fight and it just didn't go his way. He was geez, it was it wasn't wasn't a pretty sight, but the, the card was like that. It was just heavy shots, nobody trying to box. It was just big haymakers going in. But that's where I think I, I can come in. That's where I I'm comfortable coming in because I'm I'm a well skilled boxer now at this stage. I've got a bit of power, I've got a bit of a snap, but I, I've got the discipline to just to stand back, keep the jab in the face, slow it down when the time is right, then pop it. But it's it's a weird kind of um don't know what you want to say area because you got South Americans, you got Europeans like myself coming over, you've got Americans, you've got a full different class and nationalities mixing. So it's not like you have two the same styles clashing, you've Two complete different styles, but I'm pretty confident in myself that I can that I can do well. So you know? obviously I'm just looking at the timer. We've just about five minutes left here before Zoom kicks us off. Um obviously now that you're settled in Australia where we see sometimes where people just stick to sort of, you know, a lot of the Irish fighters get there just stick to fighting. Um obviously in Australia or, or Thailand or things that got close by. As obviously I guess it's early on for you, obviously having made your pro debut yet, but like, would you sort of like to mix it up? Would you sort of maybe get, you know, say one fight a year in Ireland or something like that? Like, 
Have you sort of thought that far ahead yet? Ah, uh, no, I've, 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 yeah, I've thought about it. Build up my early career here, and I'll be based here. I've, I really admire what Dara Fowley's doing. I can't admire him enough. Like he, he, he's taking big fights off against Pierce Leary, Robbie Davies, Tyron McKenna, um, Jack Jack Hatterall. Like so, he's flying back and forward. Look at TJ, he's flying to the States, he's flying to Japan. Dennis Hogan, I was at Dennis Hogan's fight when Katie Tyler lost against Chantel. Mm-hmm. I was at that fight. That took balls as well to come all the way back to Dublin. Obviously, I want to fight in Ireland. Big stuff, big stuff. I want to go back, but I want to go back a champion. I want to go back a champion. I want to defend as a champion. Finally, obviously, I just want to get your thoughts. Obviously, you know, an old stable mate of yours, obviously, and his biggest fight of his career to date this Friday night. I'm not sure if it's Friday night or Saturday morning or what way it sits for you in Australia. And I know you're still trying to get your timings right, but Kevin Kevin Cronin obviously fights Emma Brennan for the BUI Celtic super middleweight title in the three arena on the undercard of Callum Walsh in UFC Fight Pass. You're probably going to be, there's probably no point in me even asking this question because you're going to be laser focused on who the winner is, but you'll be looking forward to obviously seeing Kevin in action. Look, Kevin's a great boxer. Me and Kevin must have done hundreds of rounds. Um, I'm so confident in what he can do. And I know like, I know what he can do. If he turns up, to, the best Kevin Crown turns up, I can't like I don't want to talk badly about anyone, but nobody's gonna beat him. And he's a big he's a big game player. The stage is set for him to take it home. And I'd love to see him do it. I'd love to see him defend that title again. But in Kerry, you see no, no one else deserves it like Kerry. I Kevin what Kevin's done to Irish Fox in the last year or two is monumental. So I'd love to see him do it. Definitely. Well, well obviously we'll be there in person so even if you can't you and I know it's in Obviously, if you can pick up oh, UFC, you can get UFC fight pass in Australia. Okay, I know sometimes there's sort of uh, issues with the zone and things like that, so you'll still be able to tune in. I'll find a way. Don't you worry about that. Well, if you don't get if you don't get to find a way, obviously you know that I'll be sharing updates and things like that. But but on, we'll obviously we'll no doubt um, be speaking many times over the future. Thanks for obviously coming on and having a chat. Um, yeah. I know I'd sort of said this interview good at three o'clock Irish time today. Would have a bit of a Bit of an issue, we'll tell another stage as they as they way we're running a bit late. But um thanks, thanks for your time. Thanks for coming on and having a chat with us. And um, we'll catch up with you very soon. Much. And thanks very much for all your coverage of Irish Fox in the last few years. As a fan of the page, because genuinely have been tuning in for years. So this is this an absolute honor. Definitely. Well, listen, thanks for your time and enjoy the the rest of your day or your evening or whatever time it is there in Australia. Yeah. No butter. Thank you very much. Here, take care. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. Cheers.